For our 453 project, we made a sentry unit that has ultrasonic range finders for, uh, for sensors or eyes, and it'll shoot a laser at anything that it sees. Now the cool part is that it actually will scan back and forth, and we'll show you that in a minute, looking for objects in its field of vision. Here's a quick demo of it. You can see here it displays a little startup code just introducing itself and now it's asking for parameters that you can put in to tell it how wide of an angle you want to scan and how far up in the air you want it to point. So you can see as we increase the tilt angle it goes farther up in the air and we decrease it it goes down. This is back to level and also when we decrease the pan field of vision it starts going back and forth over a much smaller area. But let's get that back up to something larger because that's always more satisfying. When you're ready to go and you have all the correct parameters in, ah, it's shooting the cameraman. Right here, it just went into the scanning algorithm. It's looking for looking for something to find and kill. So I'll subject myself to the beast. So you follow me around the room. And it actually does an okay job of centering itself on me. Not too bad. One particular feature of the tracking algorithm that I'm kind of proud of is the fact that if you do happen to run out of its field of vision, it remembers where you were running and keeps going in that direction. So, that's enough of that silliness. And we tell it to stop. I noticed that we had them um, firing really cool Han Solo laser noises. We wish we had a louder speaker so that that would have been a little bit more apparent, but you know, piezo speakers, 50 cents, it's worth it. And in between, it was also making predator noise, predator noises, um, the little clicking noises, um, saying that it was looking for something to, to find and kill. So, the way we actually accomplished all of this, um, was we were given, of course, the FPGA and the ARM processor at our disposal. The FPGA handles talking to the servos and also reading from the sensors. As far as the ARM is concerned, all it does is make memory ac uh, accesses. If it wants to tell the servos to go somewhere, it just writes a new value to a memory location, and the servo and the FPGA takes care, FPGA takes care of all the rest. It'll modulate the pulse width modulation signals such that the servo will move. And also when you want to make a reading to any of these sensors, you give it a command and that'll tell the FPGA which of these sensors to sample at the same time. And then the FPGA will tell the sensor to go, the sensor will fire out an ultrasonic pulse, it will come back, the sensor will measure how long that took, and then return a pulse that's proportional to the distance that it read, all on the same line. And then the FPGA again is timing all that so it remembers how, like, how long that return pulse was. It puts that value into its little register set and then tells the arm, hey, your data's ready. And the arm just reads that data location and it has, it, it has the value. It doesn't need to think about, okay, I gotta send a five microsecond pulse, now I gotta count. That's all taken care of in the FPGA. The tracking algorithm though, um, we wrote actually on the board and we compiled it and debugged it on the board. Since the tracking algorithm isn't, it doesn't have to be that complicated. I mean, you're not doing heavy image processing, you're not doing heavy network accesses or database lookups or anything computationally intensive. Um, we figured let's just do it all in Linux on the board. It's got the cross compiler, we have GDB at our disposal. And when it runs, we're not going to be able to tell the difference that Linux is running in the background because Linux is very, very forgiving with the hardware. So what we did is we installed Debian on the board, which allowed us to install GDB, which is great. Um, we didn't have to mess around with all the libraries and build for it. And then when you do this in lab, you'll, you'll have this little serial terminal up, but it's a lot more helpful to actually 
um, be running an SSH server in Linux. Again, it can totally handle that. And then um, you'll actually SSH into the board, and you can do you have all your fun stuff. You can do you can you can you can write make files. You can and you can see you have GCC at your disposal with all the wonderful P threads and everything else you could ever want. One of the other tools that we used was actually you see the screen bar down here. This is Tmux. If you're using SSH, um, this allowed us to have multiple screens going without having to like have a whole bunch of just SSH sessions all logged into the same board. Um, you can also split screens with it. It's it's a nice tool um, that the friendly environment of Linux was able to provide for us. Six minutes. Done. PCB. Oh, sorry. Do you want to show me the PCB? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Do you want to cut part of that out or something? Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Just keep going. We'll keep going and figure it out. Okay. On our PCB here, um, we have external power coming in on these two wires right here. And then you'll notice we have two voltage regulators. Um, one of these voltage regulators controls everything that... Um, that requires power like the laser and the servos and then the other voltage regulator is dedicated just to the ping sensors so we isolate them that way um, and you see these diodes right here that's actually part of not a hack but a way of getting the FPGA to work as an in-out we had a lot of trouble getting the in-outs to actually work and so instead of trying to debug UCF files, looking through worlds of documentation, we figured, hey, we have the pins. Let's just um, uh, make one an input, one an output, and isolate them with a diode. But also on that PC board, we have a, we have a little buzzer, buzzer, which is what's making all the noises. And then this little FET right here is what's driving the laser. So the FPGA just gets a little bit of voltage to that FET, and it takes care of all the rest. Thanks, Dustin.